Did you know you could live stream with Riverside Audience Mode? Audience Mode is perfect for internal webinars, team meetings, or you can even share that audience link publicly. You can live stream with a chat window and also take live call-ins where viewers can actually appear live on camera to ask their question. And because you're using Riverside, you get high quality local video and audio recordings, both for you, remote hosts, and all those audience live call-ins. Let me show you how it works. Here in one of your Riverside studios, you can click plan recording, then invite to record, and rather than share the guest link, which means someone is joining you to record throughout the entire call, click that and choose audience link. This is where someone can watch live when you start broadcasting. You can also get that link in your studio. Let's go to our studio. We'll choose our camera, microphone, and speaker output, and then we'll click Join Studio. And as you can see, we actually have custom branding enabled on this studio. So if you want to learn more about branding and all of our live streaming tools, I'll link one of those videos above and in the description. But for audience mode, we can go up to the live streaming tools up here, and you'll see the public audience link, and I can enable that right here. In this particular studio, you can see I've added multiple live streaming destinations, and I can enable or disable them right before I stream and record including audience mode. But I'll leave that enabled and I can click here to copy that link to my clipboard. And if you're on our standard or pro plan with the Live Studio add-on, you can upgrade your stream to 1080p high definition streaming and remove the Riverside watermark. Now you can send that audience link to your team for an internal webinar or share it to your email list for a special live session with Q&A. When they receive that link, they don't have to download any software. They can just click that link and open that link in Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge. When viewing live, they type in their name and then enter the chat, and here they can participate even before you start recording. On the host side, maybe you want to send a welcome message or start inviting questions and answers even before you start streaming. To do that, I can go over to the chat window on the right, go over to live stream chat, and send a message to everyone watching. You can see even before I start live streaming that the chat is received by those in the audience. Then when I'm ready to record and live stream to the audience, I'll go down here and click start recording or click go live. Then I'll be recording and live streaming in high quality video and audio. The live stream does not begin until you hit record. But now that I'm live, everyone watching in the audience can see both me and other remote guests. I can share things via screen sharing or the media board and they'll see all that too. As we're conducting our live stream, if anyone puts in the chat questions or other messages, I'll see a notification right here. I can click that, see their question, and one of the cool new features of Riverside live streaming is I can actually show this on screen and everyone will see it as a lower third. I can choose to show it for 10 seconds, 20, manually hide it, but I'm gonna set this timer for five seconds. Now when I click show on stream, that question will be viewable both to everyone watching live and me and my remote guests. We can answer that question and it's a great way to help those watching live feel more engaged and part of the webinar. And you can see because I had that on a five second timer, it disappeared automatically. But those watching on desktop and laptop can request a live call-in. To do that, I can click request live call-in down here. Then that audience member will be prompted to choose their own camera, microphone, and speaker output. They'll click continue. And now they can put in a preview of their question. Once they put in their name and question, they can choose start live call. When they do that, me as the host or your producers will see that question pop up in the bottom left corner. Here I can see the person's name and the question that they typed. I can click the green check mark and they'll be invited live to actually ask their question. Or I can decline this live call in by clicking the X. You'll also see these requests over in the people tab. Live call ins will appear here, their name and the ignore or let in. But let's accept this live call in and see what they have to say. Hi, this is John from accounting and I would love to learn more about the Riverside editor and how it can help me edit video podcasts in five minutes or less. Well, it's a great question, John. We appreciate it. Now, as you can see, John has appeared as another participant in the call. You'll see it's labeled as a live call in. I can choose to hide them as a participant. And when they're finished, I can actually remove them from the recording. Now that John asks his excellent question about the Riverside editor, I'm going to click remove. I'll confirm to remove John, and he goes back to actually watching the live stream via audience mode and still has access to the chat. But you'll see that his video and audio is actually recorded and is being uploaded so we can access it after the fact. This is a great way to do a Q&A either with your team or via a webinar that you shared via newsletter and other means. Also, you can check how many people are watching live by clicking up here, and you'll see the number next to the destination. And remember, I could have also live streamed to YouTube, Twitch, and other destinations simultaneously while using Riverside Audience Mode. 
But if you would like your viewers to use that live call-in feature, that's exclusive to Riverside Audience Mode. Though, if you want to see chats from YouTube, Twitch, and other destinations, we actually have a feature called OmniChat, which brings them all in one place, and you can learn more about that in the video above, and I'll put that link in the description. Now that we're done with our webinar, we've taken live call-ins, questions, used the chat to answer. We're actually going to stop the recording, and you'll see on the audience side, they've stopped seeing the video as soon as I click stop here in my studio. My video and audio is being uploaded, both for me, my other co-hosts, or remote guests. But we can also stick around and continue chatting with those watching. This way, if there's any follow-up questions, we can answer them that way. Also, before you leave the studio, you can choose to download a text version of the entire chat, and that way you actually get timestamps and you can refer back to questions that were asked in the chat or suggestions for features. Now that everyone's video and audio files were uploaded, I'm going to go to the recordings page. Here in the recordings page, you have lots of great tools, like Generate AI Show Notes. This happens in literally just a few seconds. I didn't cut anything out. That's how fast it was. And you actually get a summary, keywords, and takeaways. This is great if you did a webinar to the team, you want to quickly send some bullet points about what happened, you can just copy it from the AI show notes right here. If you want to share short clips of the recording, you can click Generate Magic Clips, and in just a few moments, those vertical video will be shared. You can change the ratio easily using the Riverside Editor and more. And at the bottom, you'll see you get separate tracks for both all the hosts and remote guests that you invited via the guest link. And every audience live call-in will actually have separate video and audio that you could download right here. And if we jump into the Riverside editor, we can actually put it all together right here without ever leaving Riverside. You'll even see that our live call-in guest appears here in the transcription. Here's his question. We can include him. And when we remove him from the call, you'll see he disappears from this edit as well. You can also use the editor to insert live captions, use our AI producer to remove the perfect amount of silence, remove filler words, and even magic mute, which will mute parts of the track where no one was speaking, or use magic audio to make any microphone sound studio quality. We can also quickly change the format to vertical or square, overlay images, or even upload images, maybe slides from the recording. I can click one to overlay, have it fill the frame, and edit all of our content right here in Riverside. When we're ready to export, we can export up to 4K video, normalize audio so it's all the same volume, and now we have a full recording of our webinar or other live event ready to share. Finally, you can have people tune in via audience mode even on their mobile device. Once they install the free Riverside app, whenever they tap an audience link like I have here in an email, it will automatically open Riverside. They don't have to be signed in or have a Riverside account. They can click join, and now they're in the studio watching live here as an audience member. They can still use the chat window to send in questions, but audience live call-ins is only available on desktop and laptop right now. And that's Riverside Audience Mode. If you have any questions, leave comments below this video. I'll answer those personally. And if you want to learn more about the Riverside Editor and how you can use it for all kinds of talking head content, interviews, video podcasts, webinars, even conducting entire live events online, check out this playlist right here, which goes in-depth on the editor and all the tools you have available to you. And if you want to learn more about why you should add video maybe to your podcast and how you can get discovered by a wider audience, you can check out this video right up here. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the Riverside channel, hit that like button, and thanks for watching. We can't wait to see what you live stream.